Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Tuesday, December 21st. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Rose Bowl game against Utah in just 11 days. The game against Michigan in 341 days. One week from today will be the start of the official Bowl Week media events at the Rose Bowl as the Ohio State defense and Utah offense will have their pregame media availabilities. We have spent a lot of the last few weeks looking at that Rose Bowl game from the Ohio State side of things, but we haven't talked a lot about their opponents from Utah. So today we're going to at least start to fix that. My guest is Buckeye Scoops Kevin Noon. He just wrote a really interesting look at five defining moments in Utah's season. It's one of those articles where as soon as he says, here's what I've got planned for today, I'm immediately firing back. Can you come on the morning show tomorrow? Because I was like, oh, this will be a good this will be a good morning show. So, Kevin, thanks for writing that. And thanks for saying yes when I asked if you join me. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad to be here. So, I mean, I think Ohio State fans remember probably two games from the Utes this season, the two blowout wins over Oregon. But there were a lot of other games earlier in the year that I think, I mean, really helped shape how their season turned out because it was not a real linear season for them. The first was a game that I remember watching. This was, I mean, I probably watched the thing almost in its entirety because it was one of those 10 o'clock kickoffs. Um, it, it was actually the night of the Ohio State-Oregon game. Utah was visiting their arch rivals from BYU. Utah had won that game a million years in a row. And then uh, much like the Buckeyes on that day, things didn't go real well for Utah against uh, against BYU. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, Utah had won the last nine in the series in the Holy War is what it's called. And, you know, I think we all watch either, you know, we've seen the Book of Mormon on Broadway or when it comes through town or South Park. And it's like, oh, you know, it's just going to be a bunch of pleasantries. Those two programs hate each other hate mm-hmm. each other it's 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 legit so um yeah uh byu comes out and re- i mean utah's never really that competitive in the game i mean utah does trim it to 23 17 but uh a late uh field goal by byu puts it out of reach at 26 17 utah was two of nine on third down oh of two on fourth down really couldn't do much with the ball we were still looking at a different quarterback for um for Utah at that time, they were not playing Cameron Rising. They were playing Charlie Brewer, the transfer, and Charlie Brewer just did not have good luck with Utah. And it was just they hadn't found their identity. They weren't able to do a lot of the things that they did later in the season. And, you know, at that point, they just went off of their their convincing win, win against Weber State in week one and were sitting at one and one. And people were sitting there wondering if Utah was going to be a factor in the Pac-12 or not. Yeah, and then so the next week they go to San Diego to play Brady Hoke, Matt Areza, and the San Diego State Aztecs, and they lost this game as well. They fall to one and two, but this was actually the game that really kind of turned their whole season around in some ways. Yes, because they moved from Charlie Brewer to Cameron Rising, and it wasn't until they were down in this game. They were down 24-10 in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, Brewer, once again, was pretty inefficient, uh, 14 to 26, a buck oh four, no touchdowns and interception They bring in Cameron rising. They score a couple of fourth quarter touchdowns, including one with I think like 30 seconds left in the game. They force overtime, uh, rising throws another touchdown in the bottom of the first in overtime. Uh, the teams go scoreless in the second frame. And then in by third frame is, and beyond you go for two, uh, SDSU was able to hit its. Uh, but unfortunately for Utah, it wasn't able to, but Cameron rising goes 19 to 32 throws her a buck 53 and, and a half or so of football, three touchdowns. And while Utah was sitting at one and two, you know, I think that they sat there and said, well, maybe we have something And the, and the good news for them was that they hadn't played a conference game yet. So, you know, everything was still in front of them, maybe not the college football playoff, but everything else was in front of them. And ultimately they did end up winning the entire enchilada in the Pac-12. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. There's a little bit of a parallel between Ohio State and Utah, where it's not exactly the same because Ohio State only had one early season loss, so they were still kind of in the national title race. But same thing for Ohio State, where it's you know it wasn't a quarterback issue for Ohio State, but they had they had some issues on one side of the ball where they had to sort of get some stuff sorted out, and the timing worked out where they kind of got that stuff all sorted out before you got into conference play. So for uh, for Utah that first conference game was Washington state. And if you've watched any Washington state games at all, this was, this was not in Pullman, this was in, in Salt Lake city. So 
there were, you did not have the uh, Martin Stadium voodoo going for them. But, you know, th- that is still a, a team that can create matchup issues because it's just that Nick Rolovich was still the head coach is still running the run and shoot. And, you know, the Utah win that next week was not a thing of beauty, but it was a win. And that kind of got the ball rolling for him a little bit. Yeah. Cameron Rising gets to make his first start for Utah. And unfortunately for him, it wasn't really a fantastic game. He was 13 of 23 for a buck 37. No, no touchdowns, no interceptions. I mean, he was just kind of there. But uh, you look at uh, Utah, they were down by six in the third quarter. They cut it to three uh, after a fourth quarter field goal to make it 28. And then they were able to get it done the way that we've kind of seen Utah evolve as the season has gone on, running the ball in defense. TJ Pledger, the backup running back, ends up busting off a a 20-yard touchdown run that ends up giving him the lead with about four minutes and change left. And then quickly after that, Clark Phillips, yes, that Clark Phillips that was committed to Ohio State, last second flip to Utah, he ends up uh, taking a house call 54-yard interception return and that ends up giving Utah a 24-13 win. So, you know, this this Utah team early in the season kind of lived and died by the, these close games. But I think this one was important because it truly was the first start of Cameron Rising. There was no going back at that point. Um, we started to see a team that was really starting to get it done running the ball, even if more of it's Tavion Thomas than, than TJ Pledger and the defense getting some things done. Yeah, and then they had a uh, they had a big win over USC the following week, and uh, that was before that was pre firing of uh, I think that was pre firing of Clay Helton. It might have been right after uh, right after they uh, you know right before that was the that might have been the it game was right that in that fired window. Yeah, yeah, it was right. It was either the week before or the week after they fired Clay Helton at USC. But they beat they beat USC, and then they go on the road, and this is the first time they have to play a ranked team. And they go on the road to say, uh, Arizona State. And now, you know, Arizona State has kind of fallen apart since then. But the Sun Devils were ranked 18th, I think, at the time. And this was another comeback. And I think the theme you should be picking up here is it is a pain in the butt to play Utah because no matter, you know, you can be ahead, you can be behind. And they, they just they just keep coming back. They just keep coming back on you all the time. They don't stop swinging. And they didn't stop swinging. And they ended up beating, uh, beating Arizona State as well. And stop me if you heard this before. Arizona State was up 21-7 at halftime as Jaden Daniels was out playing Cameron Rising, at least at that point. And then Utah would come out and shut out ASU for the second half and score the next 28 points, a pair of rising touchdown passes, a, a pair of rushing scores. Uh, Utah would run for 208 on the on the day with three scores. Rising was 21-33 for 247, a couple of scores. He did have a couple of interceptions, but you know I think you can chalk that up to the struggles earlier in the game. Devin Lloyd, the Utah All-American linebacker, who's going to be a player you're going to really hear a lot about leading up to the game. He had a pair of sacks, uh, four TFLs in the game, PBU. Uh, You know, this was the opportunity for Utah to get that separation in the Pac-12 South race because, again, rewind a couple weeks prior, they're one and two. Granted, no league games have been played, but I think everybody thought that this might be Herm Edwards' year. This might be somebody else other than Utah to be able to win the Pac-12 South. And then they end up and they're getting the game in hand against ASU. Uh, you know, I, it was very important for them. And even though they would go on and lose next week to Oregon State, they'd already started to build some separation in the race. And then as, you know, as, as we saw down the stretch, they just got stronger as the year went on. Yeah, I went back and looked, by the way, Clay Helton got fired after week two this year. That was the oh, wow. loss to Stanford, September 11th. That was the same week that Ohio State played Oregon and uh, Utah played uh, Utah played BYU. So uh, none of the characters in this story are having very good weeks that uh, that week in week two. Um, you know, you go through the schedule. It's so interesting because you go through the schedule and you look at the first half of the season and it's just like constantly like really close gross wins over teams that you look at now you're like that team's not very good and you know later on they had a, a close win over a bad Arizona team and a close a relatively close win over a bad Colorado team but then you look at the three games they played against teams that were ranked at the times so we just talked about the Arizona State game you are probably familiar with the, their two efforts against Oregon who uh, was a pretty good team this year until they played Utah and then they just got absolutely crushed both times this seems like a team that's going to play down to its competition if it's not great competition by and large 
But man, when they are playing up against their competition and they're playing ranked competition, they beat all three of the teams they played by multiple touchdowns. Like this is a team that seems like it is going to be very, very dangerous when, you know, when they have something to play for and they have, uh, you know, they're, they're maybe a little bit of an underdog and, and trying to, uh, try, trying to knock off a highly ranked opponent. Yeah. I mean, it's a team that's shown when they're down, they're going to keep fighting and you're going to have to sit there and, and keep the, the foot, the pressure on them the entire game. And if they're, if they're interested in the game, they play very well, obviously, with the ASU and the two Oregon games, 38-7, 38-10, and the two Oregon games. Both those games very easily could have been 50-7 to and 50-10. to I think it's more Ohio State fans saw that first Oregon game because everybody at that point is like, we need that differentiation point in the college football playoff standings. We need the, We need to see them lose a game or whatever. And when uh, Utah was able to score... 14 points in 27 seconds because they scored on like, I think it was like a four yard touchdown run. They end up kicking the ball to Oregon strategic use of timeouts by Kyle Whittingham uh, afforded them the opportunity for a punt return with just a couple seconds left. And then they were able to take a a house call. Britton Covey was able to take it 78 yards and uh, Utah took a 28, nothing lead to the locker room. And, you know, the score ended up being 38, seven, I think there were some points Utah or Utah knew that it had the game. Oregon came out and was completely demoralized, didn't do anything really in the second half, a garbage touchdown toward the end. But uh, yeah, Utah is the kind of team that can just sit there and bludgeon you and bludgeon you and bludgeon you until you lose your soul. Yeah, and the guy who ran back those punts for, uh, this will be one of these uh, Brady Quinn's sister uh, kind of facts that gets beaten into your head a million times during the bowl game. Uh, the guy who ran back that punt for Utah, Britton Covey, is the grandson of Stephen Covey, who uh, was the author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, Britton Covey, the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective Punt Returners. So uh, not not as uh, as best-selling a book, but uh, still uh, made his, had made quite a name for himself. He's also been at Utah so long because he did an LDS mission in the middle of his time there. He has been at Utah so long that his first game as a college player was against Michigan in 2015. So the, you remember the, I think it was a Thursday night uh, Michigan at Utah game where Fox did the Jim Harbaugh cam because it was, oh, Jim Harbaugh is back in college. It's this crazy new thing. Britton Covey was on that Utah team. He has been in college a hot minute, but this is probably going to be the biggest game of his career because it seems like this might be the biggest game in the history of Utah football in a lot of ways. You know, maybe that that Fiesta Bowl against Pitt when they were undefeated uh, in 2004, maybe. But, you know, this is their first Rose Bowl in history. I mean, this is this is a game. Just You listen to the, the Utah players and coaches talk, you know, and there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, is Ohio State going to be up for this? You mentioned, you know, when Utah is up for a game, they are real dangerous. This is a game that you just I, I have no doubt that Utah is going to be exceptionally up for this game because it is a big, big, big time game for them maybe the biggest in school history that just seems like boy that all the all the red lights seem like they're going off to me all the you know all the danger will robinson lights like those are all going off right now for me i don't know about you yeah and ohio state still is significantly i mean i understand oregon beat ohio state head to head but ohio state when it has got all of its weapons which you know when probably not going to for the for a quote unquote meaningless exhibition game but when Ohio State is motivated, Ohio State's going to be far and away the best team that that Utah's faced. But I mean, Utah just possesses a lot of things that give Ohio State trouble, and Ohio State really hasn't had to be hasn't been pushed for four quarters. And when it has been pushed for four quarters, we haven't really liked the outcome. So uh, you know, it, it's going to be a challenge. So Ohio State's going to need to get out there, get up on on Utah. And I know we're getting ahead of ourselves here, and then. Hold on for dear life, because, you know, this team just does not go away. I mean, you know, again, we can go and just go through all of these examples. But when you sit there and you look at San Diego State and when you sit there and you look at Wazoo and everything else, and I know Ohio State's not San Diego State and Wazoo, but this team has done sometimes the psychology of knowing how to win a game is almost as important as anything else. This team knows how to win games. Kyle Whittingham, he's no... He's no flash in the pan. He's been doing it year in and year out there in Salt Lake City. So, you know, you better bring your lunch, uh, your lunch pail because it's going to be a hell of a game. Yeah, and it does seem like a game where Ohio State's going to have to make sure you, if you're up, make sure you keep scoring, keep that pedal down because uh, Utah is not a super explosive passing attack. 
if you, if they're within you know a touchdown or two and it's kind of close, they they are in that comeback range. And we just talked about a whole bunch of comebacks they've had this this year. So that'll be uh, we have plenty of time to talk about that game before uh, before kickoff. But uh, yeah, it is that is shaping up to be like this is a, this is one of these styles make fights kind of games where Ohio State probably has more talent, but man. It is a not necessarily exactly the you know style style stylistic matchup that Ohio State might want to see in the Rose Bowl, so that that might even things out a little bit. It seems like it might be one heck of a football game, and uh, this week there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm sure everyone is driving or flying or whatever for Christmas or just running around and running errands. So I've had a lot of people ask about show schedules for this week. We'll have Tony Gruden and I dropped a new episode of Buckeye Weekly on Monday. We'll have more stuff coming up later this week. Kevin, also, you dropped a new episode of Big Noon Kickoff on Monday, so people can uh, people can find that. Let people know what uh, about that about that episode you dropped and uh, where they can find it. Yeah, you can find that in all of our usual podcasting areas, whether it be on our YouTube channel or through Spreaker, Apple Podcasts. I'm I need to get better at the spiel of where everything is, but it's <laughs> it's all it's all there. And I talk specifically about the Big Ten bowl games, and I take Ohio State off the table. You're going to hear plenty about that leading up until kickoff on January 1st. And I take that team up north off the table. I'm sure at some point we're going to talk about the playoff. It just it can't be avoided. But all the other games and with opt outs, I mean, with players like uh, David Bell not playing for Purdue. I mean, just coaches moving a uh, uh, Brent prize gone from Penn State. We look at the lines. We look at some of the opt outs. I mean, granted record this on Monday by Tuesday it can become outdated. Six more players could opt out. We don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, you know, big 10 certainly puts itself into a position when you get three teams into the new year six, everybody's having to punch one or two classes above their own weight because of how that happens, because you have three teams there uh, that are not in their usual slots or what well, I guess technically one is in terms of the Rose bowl and it moves everybody off. Uh, touch upon that a little bit, but mostly just about the games itself and who I like in each of them. Uh, my betting history is really bad. So do the opposite of what I say. Yeah, and you can find that that is the big me kickoff show Let's get it. Cause his last name's noon and there's a big noon. Okay. Okay. You got it. Big me kickoff. You can find that on wherever you're finding uh, morning scoop. You can find that Apple podcast, Google podcast, SoundCloud, speaker, Spotify, all wherever fine podcasts are sold. You can find all of our Buckeye scoop podcasts. Just search. You can search Big Me Kickoff to find Kevin's show. You can just search, search Buckeye Scoop and it'll all come up. But uh, subscribe right there. You can leave us a five-star rating or review, which we do appreciate as uh, it will help other folks find those shows. And if you are watching on YouTube, you can also find those shows on YouTube. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that bell, subscribe to our channel. Then you get notified every time we drop a new video, every time we post a new live show. I think Kevin and Tony and I will probably do a live episode at some point uh, later on in the week to uh, answer some questions. Those are always a lot of fun. Those are uh, always very active, uh, very, very active and lively conversations back and forth with uh, with viewers. So uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop, and you'll get notified as soon as we go live, and you can be part of that fun show as well. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>